Greetings to all my tech heads out there in the Kev Techify Nation. And if you're new here, welcome. In this episode, we're going to look at secure Cisco IOS image and configuration files. We'll be discussing Cisco IOS resilient configuration, enable the IOS image resilient feature, the primary boot image, configure secure copy, talk about recovering a router password, and then finally, we'll go through an example of password recovery. This episode is part of my series on network security. I'm Kevin here at Kev Techify. Let's get this adventure started. The Cisco IOS resilient configuration feature allows for faster recovery if someone maliciously or unintentionally reformats your flash memory or erases the startup configuration file in non-volatile RAM memory, NVRAM. Now, the configuration file right here, the configuration file in the primary boot set is a copy of the configuration that was in the router when that feature was first enabled. The feature secures the smallest working set of files to preserve persistent storage. No extra space is required to secure the primary Cisco IOS image file. The feature automatically detects image or configuration version mismatch. Only local storage is used to secure those files, so you don't have to have network storage set up for this. And then finally, the feature can be disabled only through the console connection. So you have to console into your device to disable this feature. To secure the iOS image and enable Cisco IOS image re resilience, use the secure boot image global configuration mode command. When enabled for the first time, the running Cisco IOS image is secured and a log entry is generated. So we can see here, secured running image gives us a system update. The Cisco IOS image resilience feature can only be disabled through a console session using the no form of the command. So you have to go and put the no in front of it when you're consoled into that device. Using the show secure boot set command to verify the existence of the archive. So when you type in show secure, Boot set, we can see that the iOS re resilience of the router ID here, the image resilience version 15.4 activated on the date and the time. Secure archive here in the flash. So we can see that it is secure and where, where it's stored and what is it called. To restore a primary boot set from a secure archive after the router has been tampered with, you gotta have to go through five steps. First step you have to do right here is you have to reload your router. So go ahead and type reload and it's going to reboot the process. Once it's, it's rebooting, you have to issue your break sequence if necessary. Then for the second step right here, once we're in Raman mode, cause you broke the boot sequence, we're now in Raman mode here, do a directory of your flash. The directory of a flash will will show you the secure boot set here. Step three, boot the router with the secure boot image. Still in Raman mode here, we do a boot. We say where the storage location is. We give it the name of the file. That's what we got from our directory. And then it'll reboot with that specific image. The fourth step, so this was the third step here. Now our fourth step is log into your router, go into global configuration mode. Right here's our fourth step. In our fourth step, you enter in the global configuration mode, you restore the secure configuration to a file name of your choice using that boots, using the secure boot config restore. And so now, where is it stored? This is the name you chose. So we chose rescue.cfg. And then the fifth step here is to exit, get out of your global configuration mode. So we just go ahead and type N. And then what we do is we issue the copy command. So we're gonna copy from flash what we named it 
to the running config. If you like this episode on secure Cisco iOS image and configuration files, and you get value out of it, and depending upon the platform you're using, please click that like button, give a five-star rating, leave a comment. Doing this supports the channel, which in turn helps me bring you more great content. Click that notification bell to turn on notifications to be alerted every time I release a new episode, and there are a lot of new episodes headed your way. You can also visit my website at kevtechified.com for all my details and how to get these episodes in video and podcast form. The Secure Copy Protocol, typically referred to as, as SCP, that feature is used to remotely copy iOS and configuration files. Secure Copy Protocol provides a secure and authenticated way for copying router configuration or router images files to a remote location. So you're storing it on a different server, on a different device. SRC re relies on Secure Copy Protocol, which relies on SSH to secure communication and AAA authentication, authorization, and accounting to provide authentication and authorization. To secure a router for server-side SCP with local AAA authentication, authorization, and accounting, you have to go through six steps. First step here is to configure SSH if you don't have it already configured. These two lines, IP domain, so set your domain name, then you go through and generate your key. Once again, you have to use at least the modulus of 1024, 512 is no longer considered secure you have to use at least 1024 most people use 2048 once you have that set then we have to um that was step one step two we have to for local authentication you got to configure at least one local database user with privilege level 15. here we're going to create the username of bob with the privilege level of 15 we're also going to say the algorithm type is script and then here's your password cisco 12345 third step is to enable AAA with the AAA new model command here and this is done in global configuration mode once you've enabled it fourth step here is to use the AAA authentication login default local command. So AAA authentication login default local to specify the local database to be used for authentication. Remember, we created the username Bob locally on our device. So that's the database we want to use. The database that has Bob created there. The fifth step, we use AAA authorization exec default local. And what that does is all, all local users will have access to the exec privilege commands. And then finally, the last step here is to enable SCP server side functionality with the IP SCP server enable command. What we did now here on router one is we set up the SCP SCP server. The SCP server is where we're going to transfer files to. If we go to a different router, so right here we're going to go to R2, we can copy then to the SCP server. How we do that is we it's it's we use the copy command. And the basic syntax for the copy command is copy where you're copying it from and then where you're copying it to. So we're going to copy, we're going to copy from flash a file called r2 backup.cfg. I'm guessing we made it a router 2 backup here. We saved it to flash. So this is where we're copying from. So flash r2 backup cfg. And then we're going to copy it to SCP. Once again, we're copying it to a server. We're actually going to copy it to router 1. So it's going to ask us for the name, the IP address. So this is the IP address here of r1. What what name or... or What's the username? So we're going to use Bob. Once again, remember, we, we set up Bob here with privilege level 15 so we can use it. What's the name? Seeing as it's in square brackets, all we have to do is hit enter, or you could change it at this point. Press enter, and then it will copy it over. Typically, it goes fairly quickly. It's going to copy it over. 
It's going to ask you for a password. Then it'll give you an update saying, okay, we're going to be writing this file. Before it starts, though, it's going to ask you for a password. So we go ahead and enter our password. Once again, we, got, we set that password when we created the user, Bob. It's going to go ahead and write it. Typically, it goes fairly quick. You can see that it's only 1,381 bytes big, so it should go fairly quick. Copied across in eight and a half seconds. So once again, what we did is we copied that one file, r2backup.cfg, we copied it to our SCP server, which we set up on R1. If a router is compromised or needs to be recovered from a misconfigured password, an administrator must use password recovery procedures to reset that password. This is a 14 step process to go through to recover that password. Now, how did a password become corrupt? Well, if somebody hacked your system, they got into it and they changed your password, they locked you out, that could be a way. Or from my experience, when you went and you set your password, you, I typed it in wrong. And there is no, remember when we set our password, there is no retype your password to confirm that they match statement in the Cisco operating system. You type it in once and that's it. If your passwords aren't working, one hint I'll give you is type in what you think is the password and then hit the space bar. A lot of times people put a space at the end of the password. Think about when you type in, when you're typing something, you type in a word, you hit the space. You type in another word, hit the space. Sometimes that password, you hit the space right at the end. That'll get you in sometimes. But if it doesn't, you have to work through these 14 steps. First one here is you have to have a console connection. We're going to be rebooting the device. We're going to be bypassing the startup files. You're not going to have your IP addresses configured. Before you reboot, you have to record what the configuration register is set to. That tells it when it boots up, where do I get my configuration for? Once you've recorded that number, then go ahead and cycle power on your device. Typically on the router, there's a little on-off power switch, but if you don't have the on-off power switch, you have to unplug it. Wait a couple seconds, plug it back in. Now, as it's booting up, you have to enter in the, the break sequence. Once you've done that, you'll be in Raman mode, R-O-M-M-O-N. So here, I'll write it out, R-O-M-M-O-N. Once you're in Raman mode, you have to go and you have to change that default configuration register to 0x2142. That's a hexadecimal number of 2142. Once you've made that set, what that does is it says, when you boot up, bypass any saved configuration. Then you go ahead, you can reboot your router. Once again, flip the little switch. If you have to pull the plug out, plug it back in. As it's booting up, Press Control C here to skip the initial configuration dialog. Remember, would you like to enter initial configuration dialog? No, we don't want to do that. You can hit Control C or you can enter no. Enter into privilege exec mode. Because there was no saved configuration, you don't have to enter in a password. At that point, what we can do is copy that saved startup config into the running config. Okay, follow what happened. We booted it up with no configuration. We are able to get into privilege exec mode. Now let's load that configuration file into memory. Once it's loaded into memory, verify that you have the right configuration in there. Once you have the right configuration, change that enable secret password. Remember, we got in there without a password. We load the configuration into memory then we're going to change that password right away. Enable that password on all interfaces. And then return the configuration register back to its original setting. Once again, remember up here, we had you record that configuration setting. And then once you have everything done, the final step here is save configuration changes. I'm going to be honest with you. Memorizing this is only really needed if you're going to go take a CERT exam. You have to memorize these steps. For me, if I ever have to do password recovery, what I do is I go to Cisco 
com, and then I search for, I put in password, recovery, and then the model number. That way I'll get specific instructions because sometimes there's a different break sequence. Sometimes it varies a little bit, but this is how I remember how to do password recovery. I go to cisco.com, I search for password recovery, put the model number in there. We have the model number. And then it will give you the official Cisco document on how to recover it. Now you may have to look at three or four documents to get the exact right one because they, they mention it several times. But to me, this is the best way of doing it unless you're taking a certification exam. If you're taking a certification exam, then you need to know all 14 steps of these. If someone gained physical access to your router, they could potentially gain control of that device through password recovery procedure. An, an administrator can mitigate this potential security breach by using the no service password recovery command. So no service password recovery. This command is a hidden Cisco iOS command and has no arguments or keywords. When the no service password recovery command is entered, a warning will display and must be acknowledged before that feature is enabled. So we'll get the warning up here. Executing this command will disable password recovery mechanism. Do not execute this command without another plan for password recovery. Are you sure you want to continue? And then this is where you have to confirm it. You have to type in the word yes. It will disable the process to go through, change your configure, con, config register, bypass the startup. When no service password recovery is configured, if you do a show running config right here, the command will display the no service password statement. So right down here, it will display that the no service password recovery option is in play. That's right by the service password encryption command. So right at the top of your config statement. If you enable the no service password recovery option and you need to recover that password, so you have to recover that device, what you have to do is initiate the break sequence within five seconds after the image decompresses during the boot. So after you see all of those pound signs go across your screen, within five seconds, you have to issue that break sequence. Then you're gonna be prompted here for the break key action. And once you confirm it, the startup configuration is completely erased. So it's going to erase that, that startup config. It erases it. It doesn't bypass it. It erases it. The password recovery procedure is now enabled, and the router boots with the factory default configuration. Key thing here, your config is gone. So you have to have a backup of this. But this is a last-ditch effort. You can't get in. You but you can this way it erases all of your config now if you don't confirm the break action the router is going to boot normally with the no service password recovery command enabled it was my pleasure to provide you with this wonderful episode on secure cisco ios image and configuration files if you like this episode and you got value out of it and depending upon the platform you're using please click that like button, give a five-star rating, leave a comment. This all helps me bring you more great content. Please take a minute to subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell. All my socials and contact information are on my website, kevtechify.com. You can get all of these episodes in video and podcast form. In the upper right is my playlist for my series on network security. In the bottom right is one of my favorite videos that I linked just for you. Thank you so much for watching this episode on my series on network security. Once again, I'm Kevin. This is Kev Techify. I'll see you next time for another great adventure.